Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Freaky Festivus to you all from your good friends at SCP Explained. Deck the halls with boughs of SCP-407 induced plant life because today, we're gonna hit you with the kind of Christmas cheer you just can't contain. Hang your stockings, pour a tall glass of eggnog, and slip on your most hideous yuletide sweater. Because this is a Keter kind of Christmas. We've discussed Christmas anomalies both in depth and in passing on this channel before, like SCP-4666, the positively terrifying Yule Man, whose ritual Christmas time slaying strike fear into the hearts of families everywhere. Or SCP-784 Christmas Cheer, a community where it's Christmas every day. And anyone who refuses to show the proper spirit is dragged off and given a forcible re-education in the reason for the season. There's even the pitiful SCP-1933, a fat, sweaty, and perpetually drunk middle-aged man in a Santa suit who has Irish cream for blood. Reminds me of my Uncle Frank. But today, we're dealing with something really special. A Christmas variety show hosted by everyone's favorite Anomalous Foundation researcher, SCP-963. <clears throat> sorry, 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 we mean Dr. Bright. Dr. Bright is getting ready to receive guests for his Christmas party like no other, and the good news is we're all invited. There's going to be stories, songs, comedy, and more cameos than you could shake a Yule Log at. So get comfortable, it's gonna be a fun one. But first, a quick message from this episode's sponsors. The fine folks at the Shark Punching Center! The first and last line of defense between us and those dark-eyed subaquatic menaces! And of course, the latest Giggletastic product from our good pals at the Dr. Wondertainment Toy Company! A perfect stocking filler for the Christmas season! That's right, we're talking about Spider Party! Just add water for 80,000 legs worth of arachnophunbia! Warning, parental supervision required. Your definition of arachnophunbia may differ from that used by Dr. Wondertainment. Avoid use of this product if you are sensitive to spider venom. Not for use in households with pets or which are situated on reclaimed toxic waste dumps and or Indian burial grounds. Dr. Wondertainment is not responsible for any cases of spideritis, spiderosis, or spider mania caused by use of this product. Not to be used for gambling purposes without the express written consent of Dr. Wondertainment. Oh, and of course, an additional thank you to our friends at the Mana Charitable Foundation for their generous grant. More on that one later. While Dr. Bright prepared for guests, SCP-1845, a collection of freakishly intelligent animals including a raccoon, a crow, a baby pig, a chicken, and a fox by the name of King Eugenio, prepared a dress rehearsal for a nativity scene. Conflict erupted when the chicken kept flubbing her lines, and the other cast members found it strange that King Eugenio insisted on playing the baby Jesus himself. By all accounts, he was kind of a nightmare to work with thanks to his massive ego. The situation worsened when SCP-329-J, a floating yield sign that believes it's a ghost, turned up, claiming to be the ghost of Christmas past, and started bothering King Eugenio. If you think this is weird, you're going to have real trouble with the rest of this, so we recommend sitting back, putting your feet up, and just rolling with it. Cause it's only gonna get stranger from here. Anyway, back to the living room of Dr. Jack Bright, who was singing a special SCP Foundation parody of the Christmas Carol, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, when the first set of guests arrive. It was Dr. Charles Ogden Gears, a famously humorless Foundation senior researcher, dressed in his own adorably gaudy Christmas attire. But he wasn't alone. He'd brought special musical guests, Captain and Tenniel, the classic 1970s duo responsible for hits such as Love Will Keep Us Together, and Muskrat Love. They'd actually attended gigs like this before, but thanks to the beauty of Class A amnestics, it was all new to them. Let's ignore the murky ethical implications of that and keep on trucking. Next, this Christmas extravaganza careened into another anomalous skit, this one featuring SCP-1192, a little boy named Timmy who was somehow transformed into a bird, and Count Rockula a badass heavy metal aficionado summoned by SCP-1987-J's anomalously sick chord progression. Timmy was naturally a little upset about being trapped as a bird, and thus he was unable to spend Christmas with his family. Count Rockula, being the lord of ultimate rockness, refused to let the poor bird boy suffer. In order to cheer him up, he grabbed his guitar and launched into a spirited rock and roll Christmas carol, with much racier lyrics than you'd probably expect from a wholesome Christmas tune. The Count was left feeling a little nervous afterwards when Timmy started asking him what a <clears throat> camel toe was. 
The sooner we get away from this little disaster of a segment, the better. Back to Dr. Bright's living room once more. The good anomalous doctor had just finished telling a hilarious anecdote to Dr. Gears and 1970s music powerhouse Captain Centennial when Dr. Gears took the opportunity to break some bad news. A certain very rowdy former party guest had found out about this year's meetup, and he would likely be joining any minute now, much to Bright's dismay. As if on cue, the door burst open, and there stood SCP-076-2, also known as Abel, the immortal swordsman wearing an ugly Christmas sweater and a Santa hat yelling, Did somebody say party? Dr. Bright was mortified. At last year's party, Abel had gotten tanked on hard eggnog and embarrassed them all in front of country music legend Willie Nelson with his antics. Specifically, he'd stolen a local sleigh and used it to run over Bright's grandmother. Hilarious. However, Abel insisted that this time around he'd be well behaved. Only time would tell if that prediction held any water. He began to sing a personalized parody of Away in a Manger in a grating falsetto voice as an act of penance. Let's get away from those goofballs again and hop over to another ace comedic duo, Lord Blackwood and Wellington G. Wonderhorse. Blackwood, also known as SCP-1867, is a telepathic sea slug who believes he was once a gallivanting British noble and explorer. And Wellington, also known as SCP-1156, is a talking horse with a thick cockney accent and a dapper woolen scarf and top hat. This pair of talking creatures wish the audience a very Merry Christmas before engaging in conversation. However, this didn't get very far, as Lord Blackwood couldn't understand Wellington's thick cockney accent. When Lord Blackwood got too frustrated to go on, he called Wellington a horse's ass. Everybody laughs, roll on snare drums, curtains. <clears throat> now then, back to Dr. Bright's increasingly chaotic Christmas house party. Abel was already getting a little sloshed and telling wild jokes when another guest appeared at the door. When Dr. Bright answered, he saw Dr. Wrights, a female fellow researcher standing there in a full-body trench coat. She expressed a desire to meet Dr. Bright under the mistletoe, to which she replied, Wrights, I, I didn't put up any mistletoe this year. But Wright, obviously in the Christmas spirit with a smile on her face and with no concern for the lack of mistletoe at the party, disrobed from her trench coat. Donned in her hand-knitted wool Christmas two-piece, she began to dance towards Dr. Bright while singing a parody of the saucy Christmas hit, Santa, uh, baby. <clears throat> okay, um, let's cut to another word from one of our sponsors, the wonderful folks at the Mana Charitable Foundation, the world's leading anomalous charity group. In this sponsorship break, Mana Charitable Foundation representative Sally Struthers placed a small mechanical contraption on the table and said, This is the Christmas Miracle Maker. Thanks to state-of-the-art terraforming technology, this durable and easy-to-use device, once activated, will induce rapid and aggressive climate change in order to transform its surrounding environment into a perfect snowy winter's day, just in time for a white Christmas. The seed banks and genetic samples contained within it will ensure that majestic evergreens, just right for decorating, and reindeer perfect for pulling a one-horse open sleigh, will replace all the local flora and fauna, and it can even whip up a Christmas dinner with all the trimmings for those souls in need. Every one of your donations puts us one step closer to our goal of manufacturing and airdropping 15,000 of these units across Africa in time for Christmas Eve. So please call in your pledge or write a check today and let them know it's Christmas time again. Thank you, Sally. Let's get back to Dr. Bright's party. Now things are looking a little more safe for work, if only slightly at least. Decorated Russian Mobile Task Force operative Agent Strelnikov had joined the party and was naturally beginning to make multiple jokes about how much he hates Chechens, much to the discomfort of everyone else in attendance. The other party guests tried to make him discuss literally anything else, but he refused, repeatedly circling back to telling stories about Chechens. He only broke from his diatribe to give a rendition of the formerly popular Trollolo meme song, which he insisted was a traditional Russian song of homecoming. Back to King Eugenio the Fox, who'd been going through a parallel Christmas Carol narrative this whole time during Dr. Bright's story. The talking yield sign was his spirit of Christmas past, and while we sadly missed his spirit of Christmas present, as we join him before his own gravestone, we can see that his spirit of Christmas yet to come was SCP-173, the sculpture. As the sculpture pointed towards King Eugenio's grave in judgmental silence, Eugenio came to terms with what a jerk he'd been. 
When he was freed from this horrible fantasy, he realized that he needed to change his ways, and thankfully there was still time. Back to Dr. Bright's Christmas party, which was in full swing. However, Captain Antennial, who had been in charge of cooking the Christmas goose, had made a terrible mistake. They were told to run it through SCP-914 on the fine setting, which would create a wonderful goose roast. But instead, they ran it through the very fine mode, turning it into a collection of live goslings. However, in their greatest hour of need, a hero rose. Dr. Clef appeared at the door, dressed as Santa Claus, with enough delicious clam chowder for everyone. And as the party guests enjoyed their chowder, even more guests arrived. King Eugenio, Wellington, SCP-173, Lord Blackwood, the ghostly yield sign, Count Rocula, Timmy the Bird, and even Sally Struthers, while the rest of the anomalous animals formed a perfect nativity scene. While Count Rocula performed a rock and roll rendition of Come All Ye Faithful, Dr. Bright was content that everyone here had learned the true meaning of Christmas after all. Even King Eugenio had learned a lot about being more kind and compassionate to his fellow beasts. With the help of Lord Blackwood, he obtained SCP-662, the butler's handbell, and used it to summon Mr. Deeds along with a delicious, fully cooked Christmas goose with all the trimmings. While Dr. Wrights flirted with Abel and the other party guests prepared to enjoy their chowder and goose, Dr. Bright wished everyone a happy Christmas, with Timmy adding, And 343 bless us, everyone! We hope this little exploration into how the Foundation celebrates Christmas has helped your heart grow three sizes this day. And not in the way it would if you ate a meal off of SCP-807. Stay tuned for a Keter kind of Hanukkah and a Keter kind of Kwanzaa coming soon. Now go check out SCP-4666 The Yule Man and Alaska Doomsday Weapon SCP-804 World Without Man for more snow-swept havoc from the SCP Foundation.